Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I'm a 45-year-old male, and my wife, Hazel, is 44 years old. We have one child and have been married for five years. We dated for a year before getting married, and during that period, I was a writer working on fiction novels. Hazel had been working as a junior journalist at a small magazine when we met at a book festival. The day we met, Hazel was wearing a purple shirt with a pair of jeans. I do not like women who wear a lot of makeup, and Hazel was quite simple. Hazel was very talkative, and I was a rather shy person. At that event, Hazel was interacting with everyone and laughing aloud at everything. Everyone appeared pleased with her, but I wasn't one of them. I found her to be really annoying, but when she approached my seat and conducted a little interview with me about my book, it changed my mind. I thought she was pleasant. She seemed very serious about her profession and asked me thoughtful questions related to my book. At the end of that interview, Hazel took my number. I'm a good-looking guy, and Hazel told me that introverted, shy guys are appealing to her. So, she contacted me two days later and asked me for a date. I was hesitant to go, but my friend persuaded me to give it a try. Our date was fantastic. Hazel kept cracking small jokes, and she was at ease discussing everything from politics to entertainment to fashion. I found her interesting. We were polar opposites in nature, and it is likely that opposites attract. Therefore, we fell in love but Hazel actually pressured me into marriage. I intended to have my novel published before our wedding, but Hazel wanted to get married as soon as possible. She said she believed in religion and was against any relationship before marriage, so we got married after dating for one year. Six months after our marriage. I was busy with the publication of my book, and Hazel had some free time. She wanted to go on a honeymoon, but because we got married so quickly, I hadn't saved much money for it. Hazel knew my book had to be published, so I had neither the time nor the money for a honeymoon. But she made a big deal out of it, urging me to go. When I couldn't, Hazel packed her bags and headed to her parents' house in Texas. I had not expected such immaturity from her. I was surprised at her behavior. I kept calling her to come back, but she kept making arguments. She stayed at her parents' house for three months over the issue of the honeymoon. Whenever I requested her to come back, she would say my writing profession was very unstable and time-consuming. She pressured me into finding a normal sort job. I was a simple man, it was my first marriage, and I adored Hazel. I wanted to keep this marriage, so I left my writing profession and found a job in management. Hazel returned, and we resumed our normal lives like a typical couple. We had our first child two years after our marriage, and I was overjoyed but Hazel was suffering from postpartum depression. I had one month of paternity leave, and Hazel handed all of the responsibilities, laundry, dishes, and other dreadful domestic chores, to me. Our time alone became family time. She wanted me to change diapers and feed our baby, and she didn't want to participate in any of it. When I objected, she told me that she had carried the baby for nine months and could no longer bear any responsibility for our child. I had never seen such an irresponsible mother before, so I assumed it was just a phase and due to postpartum depression. I was handling all the housework, from laundry to cooking, as well as caring for our new baby on my own. As my paternity leave came to an end, Hazel was still not ready to take on any responsibilities. She would sleep all day, watch her shows, and go to church every other day. I spoke with my mother and friends, and they suggested she might need therapy. I persuaded her to go to therapy, which she did. Therapy helped her, and her behavior towards me became more pleasant. But she still showed no interest in the baby. She started asking me to leave my job because one of us needed to stay at home with the baby. She expected me to play the role of a stay-at-home dad so she could continue her job as a journalist. I had no problem participating in parenting and household chores, but I was not ready to do everything alone. I was unwilling to leave my job again because of her demands. 
I attempted to reason with her, but she argued that she never wanted to have a baby and that I was the one who pressured her, which was untrue because it was our mutual decision. We had a big fight when Hazel kept pushing me to quit my job and do freelance work on Upwork or Fiverr. I told her she couldn't make decisions about my career all the time, and once again, Hazel packed her bags and went to her parents' place, leaving the baby with me. Her parents showed no interest in our son, and they never came to meet him. They just called us to send congratulations. I was shocked and saddened by her behavior towards our baby. I called my mother and explained the whole situation. My mother came to watch the baby so that I could return to my office. She stated that Hazel was depressed. I kept calling Hazel during that time, as it was difficult for both me and the baby. I was a new father who wished for a normal family life but found myself alone in that chaos, worried about my baby, worried about earning, and worried about our marriage. But Hazel kept declining my calls. After 15 days of Hazel's full disappearance, I phoned her parents. Instead of saying anything to their daughter, her father began lecturing me on how horribly I treated Hazel and how she needed time as a new mother. I ended the call and decided never to contact them again. However, Hazel called a few days later and apologized, saying she needed time to adjust to her new life as a mother and that she was trying her best. I once again gave her my time and took care of my child with my mother for three months alone. Hazel returned after three months and convinced my mother to stay with her so that we could both work while my mother cared for the baby. My mother has a big heart, and because she had been caring for my child since the beginning, she was already bonded with him. She consented to stay with us. When Hazel returned, she showed me more devotion, gave me expensive gifts, and bought toys for our baby. But still, she didn't show any care towards our child. At the time, I was used to her behavior, so I stopped caring. I spent several hours with our baby, feeding him after I got home from work and playing with him, while Hazel merely bought him toys. When I got home from work, I spent time with my mother and the baby, and Hazel would return from her day job, drink tea with us, and tell us she had to attend a work event. She would dress up and go to those gatherings on weekends and spend time in churches. Time was passing, and our baby was growing up with both parents, but unfortunately, his mother was unconcerned about him. She had never even bothered to hold him, but to show the world, she organized his first birthday at our house and pretended to be the best mother ever. I was perplexed by her behavior, but she told me that every mother is different and that, at the very least, I was contributing to our baby's life in some way. My mother was pleased with Hazel's participation in our son's birthday celebration, so unwillingly, I went along with her act and allowed her to pretend to be the best mother she never was. She hired professional photographers and posted our family photos on social media. Everyone was praising her, but no one knew the reality. After the birthday event, Hazel resumed her cold act. Jerry, our son, was one year old and started walking, and I was there for him all along. Hazel was not present when our son took his first steps, she was not there when Jerry said his first word, Daddy. Hazel was quite friendly with me, she would plan date nights, press my clothes, and send me, I love you, texts all day long. So, I was content with our marital life, even if it was an awkward situation in which my mother was still living with us, despite the fact that I had hired a nanny as well. One evening, Hazel came back from work and started getting ready for a night event. She asked me to join her, but I wanted to spend time with my son, Jerry, so I declined. Hazel was in the bathroom when her phone rang. I never had a habit of checking her phone, so I just picked it up to see who was calling but it was a text, and the notification was blinking on the screen, saying, Babes, can't wait to see you in that black dress, along with kiss emojis. I put the phone back on the table and pretended not to see anything. Hazel had no idea I had seen her text. She checked her phone and smiled when she saw the screen. I made the decision to follow Hazel that evening. She left the house in her car, so I drove cautiously behind her. I was surprised when Hazel stopped her car in front of an old apartment building rather than going to any event. I assumed she was probably picking someone up, so I waited in my car, but two hours passed, and Hazel didn't come back from that apartment. 
I drove home and decided to investigate this further the next day. I discussed it with my closest friend, and he advised me to track her. I did not take his advice lightly and purchased a vehicle tracking system with GPS to ensure that the results were reliable. It was a challenge to install it in her car, but because I had never shown any suspicion towards her, never tried to check her phone, and had never shown any interest in her activities, she gave me her car keys when I told her my car was having trouble and I needed her car to take Jerry to his doctor appointment. I attempted to be as natural as possible, taking Jerry with me as if we were actually going to a doctor's clinic, and then installed the tracker in Hazel's car. I also put apps on my phone to follow her location. I kept following her and checking her whereabouts. Hazel continued to spend hours at that flat every two days. One day, she informed me that she was taking an office trip for a week. I agreed and even assisted her in packing as usual. However, when I followed her, the tracker indicated that she was in Texas at her parents' house. Her lies and suspicious actions startled me and made me curious. With the help of a friend, I gathered information about the apartment where Hazel frequently went. Neighbors surrounding that apartment told me about the owner of that apartment, and one woman revealed that the guy was married to Hazel. It turned out he was Hazel's first husband. Hazel had never told me she was married before marrying me. I was shocked and shattered, but this time I was not prepared to listen to any of her lies. So, I finally contacted a divorce attorney and filed for divorce. When Hazel returned from Texas, I handed her the divorce papers. She was shocked because she had not expected it, she had no idea I knew about her affair with her first husband when I shouted at her about her disloyalty. She was shocked to see my behavior because, to her, I was a shy, simple man who was never supposed to know the truth. She confessed about her first marriage. She cried and admitted that she was having an affair with her first husband, but insisted it was nothing serious. Further investigations revealed that Hazel had two children with her first husband, and her parents in Texas were parenting them. This explained why Hazel kept going to Texas for months and possibly why she never showed any interest in our baby. That's also why Hazel's parents never came to see our baby, they were already raising her two children. Hazel stated that she got divorced from her first husband at a young age and never wanted to spend her entire life as a single mom, which is why she never told me about her children. She said she didn't want to involve her kids from her previous marriage in our new life together, and she had no explanation for her affair with her first husband. But I divorced her and cut her out of my life. I didn't want any more explanations from her. Update. I divorced Hazel and am now raising my child alone with the assistance of my mother and a babysitter. Neither Hazel nor her parents sought custody because she did not want the responsibility of another child. Hazel's first husband had abandoned her yet again, and she is now living with her parents in Texas. However, her parents are tired of her, they and her children do not want her in their lives because they have grown used to living without her. Hazel begged me for reconciliation, but I don't want anything to do with her again. She even tried to persuade my mother to convince me, but I'm quite happy without her. My mother now knows about her betrayal and is content with the happiness of my son. Hazel's parents reached out to me, apologized, and expressed their shame at her deception. They also indicated they wanted to get rid of her. However, I don't care about their apologies. I've picked up writing again and am currently working on my next book so I can quit my managerial position and devote myself full-time to writing. A co-worker expressed interest in me, but I'm cautious about dating anyone right now because I'm fully focused on my son's well-being. While I don't have a romantic relationship, I do get along well with my co-worker, and she treats my son with a lot of kindness. I could use your guidance on how to navigate my relationship with my co-worker and how to start trusting women again. Please leave your suggestions in the comments section. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, keep on living life to the fullest.